there, buddy. It's Danny Rich again at GR Research. We're going to be continuing our series on comb filtering, looking at the comb filtering effects of adding a super tweeter or adding a tweeter to a full range or wideband driver. And this is something that's pretty common in the DIY community, especially with the open baffle groups. You'll see guys using some type of a full range driver or wideband driver, and then because it doesn't play all the way to 20k hertz, you know, it may roll off a little sooner than that. The, the concept or idea is, hey, I'll just add a tweeter to the top, like a super tweeter, and just play that top octave. And then I really don't have to put a crossover or anything. The driver naturally is rolling off with no crossover on it. And then I just put a single capacitor on the tweeter to roll off the bottom end off the tweeter and make it cross at 15k hertz or something and everything should be great right well no not really so today we're gonna look at it we're gonna see what really happens we're gonna have some fun we're gonna take some measurements uh, I'm gonna be using this little driver here as a test bed um, this is a little uh, sample driver we had made for us uh, during the development of the little LGK three inch full range drivers that we did. Um, as you can see the uh, diameter is much smaller than what most people use as full range drivers, usually six and a half, eight inch drivers. Um, so when we add the tweeter to the top of it, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little block of foam under it and that'll get the acoustic centers a little further apart. It's still going to be closer together and better than if it were one of these larger diameter drivers. So what we're going to see in the measurements is actually a little better case scenario than what happens in reality whenever those acoustic centers are further apart. And there's a couple of ways we can go about looking at the distance differential. In other words, whenever we've got a microphone out in front of this thing, whenever the distance between the two drivers change slightly, uh, we're going to see some comb filtering effects. Uh, because of the time delay difference from one driver to the other driver. So one of the ways you can do that is to change the measuring point. In other words, lift the microphone up or down to change those two distances. Or in this case, what I did was I just moved the tweeter back a half of an inch each measurement to see then how that distance differential impacts the response. It'd be the exact same thing as if I move the microphone up or down but it's just a little easier to do. And that's what we're going to see in the first set of measurements. Let's have a look and let's see what happens. Let's see what happened when we move that tweeter around a little bit. First, let's have a look at the response of just the wideband driver. Uh, response was, uh, uh, it's actually a lot smoother than it looks. These are a 5 dB increment scale, so uh, it looks a little choppier than it is. Uh, this drop-off area that we see here, starting right here at about oh, 18k hertz, that's what we call baffle step loss. Uh, and that's going to be a whole nother lesson uh, that I'll give you in the future. Uh, besides that, what we're going to look at is what's going on up top. As you can see, just as this crest about 10k hertz, this thing starts to take a dive. And I mean, it, it takes a dive. So it would be a good candidate for uh, a super tweeter in the minds of many, they say, hey, let's add this tweeter and we'll fill in that upper range and we'll get back some of that airiness and, and some of those spatial cues. And here's what the tweeter's doing. Um, we'll just look at it independently first. This is typical of when you just put a single cap on a tweeter. Uh, you get what's called a first order roll off. What it is is that it's a long gradual slope. It isn't something that just crosses real steeply or falls really quickly. Uh, a single cap still lets it play a long way down in frequency range. As you can see, it's crossing it um, somewhere around 12k hertz or so. Um, but there's still a lot of uh, energy, even all the way down to 2k hertz and below. And that's that's typical of a of a tweeter when you just put a, uh, a single filter on it. Next, let's take a look at. Um, some of the measured responses. Uh, here it is with the tweeter aligned with the front baffle uh, of the full range driver. Oh, ooh, what happened here? Um, 
This red line's a frequency response. I'm going to drop these two out so you can take a little closer look at it. Uh, yeah, what happened here? Uh, you, you would expect that you'd get the low frequency driver plus the tweeter and you'd get a summation of the two. Really? Like one plus one equals two, right? No. We, we did get some gain here. We, had, we got a peak here right where they're crossing, so they are in phase at the crossover point. But what happened here? I mean, we're, we're at a huge dropout, 20 dB or more, and it dropped completely off the scale. I'd have to do, uh, raise the scale up just to see how far that dip went, and it's 20, 25 dB. Uh, all of that area there is where the drivers are out of phase. That means the output from one driver is arriving out of phase from the other and it's causing this huge cancellation. That is comb filtering. And that is typical of what we see and what we hear whenever uh, you try to add a tweeter to a full range driver at a high crossover point like that. Now let's see what happens when we move the tweeter back one half of an inch. Just one half of an inch. We get this orange line here. Now the orange line what we've got is now at the crossover point, we are out of phase and we've got a dip here. It's about, um, it's not completely out of phase, but it's, it's a high degree of phase rotation. It's, it's about a 10 dB or more dip uh, in contrast with where it was before. It was about a 15 dB span from where it was before when it was in phase. We moved it back again one half of an inch. Um, it dropped it deep out of phase in that area. If we get over here to about 2.8 kHz, we're out of phase again. We've got a double dip here. So we've got multiple cancellation points uh, at, that, at that wavelength here and here. Now let's see what happens when we move the tweeter back again, just one half of an inch. Ah, here's what most people expect is going to happen. It's all this upper area here where, there are, where the wavelengths are kind of on top of each other. They're arriving to the microphone in phase and they're uh, creating a, a high peak here. But notice down here at just below 2 kHz, we've got a lot of cancellation going on here. So that peak that was there has been now knocked out. And now we have this big rise up top. It's like a big ski slope. Uh, shaped response here and that would be really fatiguing that would be pretty hot in the top end pretty hard to listen to you know not something that would be ideal at all uh, we're going to do this one more time I'm going to move the microphone not the microphone I'm going to move the tweeter back another half of an inch and we get the green line here now the green line again we're out of phase at the crossover point uh, we're actually in phase uh, through this area here. It's kind of a broad area here where we're in phase and we brought the level up. And then again, we're out of phase in the lower frequency range. And again, when things are arriving at, out of phase, they're out of time with each other. Uh, one wavelength is arriving just behind the other. What it does is it messes with the imaging. It messes with when things are arriving and from one speaker versus the other in time and where they are within the sound field and within that space, within that listening space. So there's large disruptions there when those things are out of time. So I know you think, well, you know, you want to you want to add a super tweeter, you want to add that top end, you want to get that air back. But when you add a front firing driver like that, and it's uh, wired in phase, or you can flip the polarity and wire it out of phase, and you can get completely different comb filtering locations. It's still a mess any way you look at it. Um, if you look at all the measurements that we took, the smoothest and the best one is the full range driver without the tweeter. So next we're going to look at an ideal way to add a tweeter and not get this effect. That's what's coming up next. Okay, here we go. Here are some solutions that can be implemented that will allow you to add that tweeter or add that super tweeter and gain back some of those upper uh, register details that you've lost, gain back some of those spatial cues, 
It can improve the imaging, the soundstage layering, and there's several ways you can do this. First of all, what you can do is add a tweeter to the back of the box. You can add a rear firing tweeter. So what happens when you add a rear firing tweeter to it? You're, you're hearing some of that reflected energy within the room. Uh, it's reflecting, of course, off your front wall, and it does add a little bit to the presentation. If you've ever heard a speaker where it, it had a rear firing tweeter, or what's called an ambience tweeter, especially when you could turn on and off. It's kind of interesting to hear the differences between the two. And there are some special things that happen when you turn it on versus not being there at all. Uh, it also depends on the room, the room treatment, the reflection points of the room, you know, how much uh, damping you've got on that front wall and things like that. All that take you have to take into account. All that comes into play. But that is a way that you can add that back without disrupting the on-axis response because obviously the tweeter output is going to go this way your full range driver output is going to be going this way you're going to hear some of that reflected energy off the wall it can also arrive somewhat out of phase from the output of the front just as it just as it would as if it were a sidewall reflection or a ceiling reflection but it's delayed in so so far in time the wavelength that this would cancel has already gone forward so far that it's it can't cancel the same wavelength it's or the same output it's multiples of wavelengths behind it so what your ear does is perceive it as ambience um, it doesn't it, hear it, it hears it as a delay and as ambience it doesn't hear it as part of the original signal the other thing you can do is to add a tweeter facing up uh, and this is this works out really well and you can do this on an open baffle speaker you can't add a rear firing tweeter on a speaker on an open baffle because you're going to wind up canceling the output uh, on the back side just as you would on the front side uh, you can only do the rear ambient tweeter on a on a sealed speaker or box speaker but with the up firing tweeter you can do this on um, an open baffle speaker or a box speaker and what you're wanting to do is you're wanting that driver to be mounted at the very top of the uh, top of the box now you wouldn't want to do that with a, a ribbon like we've been using here that would cause the ribbon to sag so not a good idea but you can use any dome tweeter this is a you know might be a great choice you're only using the very top registers something small works great but the thing you have to keep in mind is you want the voice coil or the acoustic center of that driver to align with the acoustic center of your front driver so that's where some of these small diameter tweeters come into play so let's say this is a little further down in the box and you might align it something like that now when you've got a bigger driver you know obviously the voice coil is set a lot deeper into the cabin into the cabinet so that tweeter can be a little further back and be more centered on the box even a tweeter like this might could be used with a bigger faceplate and it's still aligned. Now what that's going to do is the output of the tweeter obviously is going to be going up and because you've got such a small cap value on the tweeter you're not allowing it to become real omni in its pattern. It's still more in a, in a range where the output is still beaming. In other words the output is just coming up in this direction. It's not spreading out because you're not letting it go into those lower frequency ranges. Only in those lower frequency ranges does the uh, off-axis broaden and become bigger. So you're limiting it to how, how low it's going to play. And then on your full range driver, you've got the same effect. Uh, you, you're in those top octaves, you're well into its beaming frequency where the output of it is just coming straight forward. So you've got output coming just forward this direction. You've got output coming up. And you really don't have much overlap between the two. Even as you start moving your listening position or your microphone higher and higher, you'll drop off from one and you'll start to pick up on the other. And it'll actually maintain a more even response in the off axis, at least in the vertical range. That will add back your spatial cues. That will add back your ambience. Uh, that will improve your imaging, your sound stage, without the detrimental effects of it being on the front baffle. As soon as you put it on the front baffle in any way, crossing at those higher frequencies anytime you change distances 
either listening distance or measuring height even a little bit, you're going to you're going to cancel the output of one with the other because the wavelengths are just too short. It's just too short of a wavelength. It's just a small incremental movement can be a big difference. We noticed from the first measurement a huge hole in the response and then by the time we got to the third measurement where it had actually been moved back one inch we noticed them absolutely in phase over quite a bit of range. It was a very significant difference with just a one inch movement. It's the same way with the response in the room. Your ceiling reflection will have that same big hole in it. You want uh, your response to be more even throughout the whole room. Up firing the tweeter uh, will, will give you that, but as soon as you mount it on the front baffle, you're asking for cancellation effects. You're better off actually letting the tweeter play down into the range that it can handle more easily and putting a real crossover on it and crossing it at 2K hertz or so, somewhere where both drivers are more comfortable. That would give you a much more even uh, off-axis response in either direction. The wavelengths at 2K hertz are much lower. So as you start changing vertical height, you're only moving them a fractional amount in just a little bit of phase rotation. So you're not causing one to be completely out of phase from the other like you do when you're trying to cross it at those high frequencies. So guys, keep that in mind uh, when you're trying to add a tweeter to a full range driver. Hopefully that helps. Be sure and try it if you've got one and you're trying to implement. Try it in the up facing position. Let me know how that works out for you. That's all for today. We'll have another subject next week. Thanks for viewing. Have a good one. One half of an inch. Just one half of an inch.